Hello, Internet. I'm Jackie Fox. After several takes, we're here. Let's hope nothing goes wrong. Today, we're going to be following up the most popular video on my channel of all time. This and bad boy right here, who I'm skipping in global from March to July. And we have gotten awful close to July, so let me update some of those predictions and talk about some even newer units. But also, keep in mind, this is going to be a bit of a roast. I'm going to be saying exaggerated, if not kind of mean things about imaginary characters that you may or may not have inappropriate levels of feelings for, so this could be kind of offensive for you. You should also keep in mind that this isn't necessarily advice, and largely the reason that I'm skipping all of these units is they just don't work for my account. It doesn't mean that they aren't good and that they wouldn't work for your account, it's it's just I have different priorities for whatever reason but some of the things some of the some of the roots I would say of what I'm gonna be saying actually come from genuine complaints that I have about the units but the rest of the time I'm just gonna be picking on them so now that we know what to expect now that we know what's coming now that we know what I'm doing here let's get into the video so first point first person I want to rest is Mr. Pointy Boy Jaden. Now, I did pick on how he overcompensates with his weapons, whether it be a big long spear or a big rotating magic cannon. Um, but this boy likes to shoot his magical energy all over the field, specifically, often at range. Just really blasting everybody. Um... As a unit, as units, the Jadens usually have quite high penetration. He really enjoys penetration. Um, this guy, this guy can remove hate from a unit, specifically hate. And actually, let's let's take a look at this skill. Let's just see what we got here. Increased chance of being targeted. So it's not that it dispels hate. Wait. What? I, uh... What? Okay. So, um... What? That can't be it. I'm, I, look, I'm going to assume that's it. I don't, I'm not sure I can roast a piece of his kit that uh, I can't fucking see. Um, but, uh, yeah. The most overcompensating boy in the world. King Jaden. Next unit that I wasn't super excited about is Lena. Because, let me say this. I have Sadly. It solidly does damage and disrupts the enemy uh, feel. Lena is just a stubbornly good support. And you know what? At least for the first couple of turns, which is where you need to support the most, solidly is a stubbornly good support. And I think especially if uh, some of the abilities that she has that make her unique become less unique over time as power creep sets in perhaps across the board, maybe people get more casts of re-raise, maybe more supports get a double cast re-raise. You know, this is generally the way things go once things are introduced. I just don't think Lena is going to have the most amazing staying power as a 90 cost unit in a 100 cost world. I mean, I, I guess she kind of kind of cute though but also in a like really young kind of way like you you cute little kid like i, I just pat you on the head He's, wow ain't too special <laughs> all right moving on from short more we're gonna talk about oh she's also pretty short oh <laughs> Ah, fuck boy Howlett! 
All right, fuckboy Howlett. Let me let me explain to you why I don't like this guy. All right, he first of all, he, he he's kind of simple. In his worldview, he sees only two genders, which is unfortunate. It's even more confusing because those genders happen to be knight and princess. He has never seen a woman that he did not believe was a princess. Which is weird. Like, the way that he throws himself at women is strange. Uh... <laughs> And like literally any woman that crosses his path, like like any woman that crosses his path, this guy has got to be fucking lonely or something. Oh man, I'm glad he's got his family to keep him company or he probably wouldn't have made it to his second form. Because good lord, this boy has to deal with some rejection. He's got to deal with my rejection because Look, even as an ice player, uh, I don't, I'm not doing ice slash right now. And even if I was doing ice slash right now, this fucking sucks. This is an upgrade. Look, you're in DPS. This is an upgraded buff. Do you know what generation you're in? Do you know what you're supposed to measure up to? Even as an ice slash unit, let me show you what you're supposed to be measuring up to. I've got King Bradley here. Bam! This is this is for me. If you are a DPS released after King Bradley, either you better have the best spread of passives in the world, or you better have something that is this good or better. This this gives you a solid foundation for tank busting, a solid attack increase, and an extra ability. That is all great, right? But for Ice Slash specifically, and yeah, it does, he burns two upgrades on it, right? That kind of sucks. But arguably the best single passive in the game as he comes out gives him that basis for defend, uh, for tank busting, basis for raw power, and makes him an incredible brawler with a threshold heal off of a passive, so it's always going to be applicable when he can hit it. So, given that these units are so much better, given that I, on the account that would be pulling for Howlett, potentially already have this guy. I mean, I think like the one, the one positive argument that I will make for elegant fuckboy Howlett because he has gotten a little bit classier in his in his look he looks more like a count now um, ooh ooh Dracula Howlett for Halloween that would be interesting um probably the best thing that he has going for him in many respects is that he is not right after Bradley because Potentially, players just don't have the viz going into Reagan to be able to pull his banner, and they may still want to go into Ice Slash, and they may not want to waste their viz, and they may want to save up. But I don't think you get both. Like, I think it, maybe if you do really well, and you're really stubbornly dedicated to Ice Slash, and you do really well on Reagan, I think it's a free to play, you might be able to build up the viz to get enough for Howlet. Otherwise, you're going to have to rely on luck to get these two, and, I mean, look, I, uh, go for go for Reagan, sure, but Howlett, you'll pull him when you pull him. Like, unless you're really dedicated to Ice Slash, and I'm not. <laughs> Fuck this guy. But, that being said, he is strong. He is a, a hundred cost unit. He may be hard to pull, but he's not necessarily bad, but let's talk about that, and when we talk about bad, this, not bad. Not necessarily. In fact, this roast is going to have to go much, much deeper than just Dia herself. Because really, I have to pay Dia some compliments for you to understand just how insulting this would get for her. And the first compliment is that she is at least the second strongest unit on the screen. <laughs> 
<laughs> At least. Probably the second strongest unit on the screen. I don't know. Maybe somebody gets a really, really good... Nope. No, nope, not gonna happen. I don't know. It may too. I, no, not, probably not gonna happen. Yeah, no. Arguably the, the second best unit on the screen. Maybe the best unit on the screen. Maybe. But that maybe hurts. You know why that maybe hurts? Because these are like the two worst free farmable units in the game. Even though water has two, has two free farmable units where most elements still only have one, and with this we're going to have three, and also there's this on, and he's basically free for everybody anyways. Uh, you've got so much free power, and none of it's good. This is on, but you have to watch ads for him to really, really get that actual power out of him. And out of everyone on the screen, even after Dia comes out, the one that's going to be used the most in limited, is going to be Zazan. By far. So... Uh, already being outperformed by the normal cost unit of her element, let's talk about Dia. Because, again, she's maybe the strongest unit on the screen, and that is worth commending. I think there's going to be a, a case for building Dia other than she's free, or you're a water unit, uh, water player, because, you know... I think if those two things overlap, you should probably build the unit anyways, even if you aren't excited for her. Uh, the thing that she really has going for her is being a main job version of what Sweetheart Miranda is. Sword Sorcerer. Okay, so as a Sword Sorcerer, she is pretty good against Missile, but also like magic users, but not to the same degree, so like anti Jaden, but not new Jaden. Really, the thing I see going for is if you didn't go for Miranda, you go for her as a way to test out that job. <laughs> Cause it will be on some uh, even more future units. I, I think it's on uh, Lena, maybe. So if you aren't going for either of those, that's a free taste of a new job. And I can't be too mad at that. Wait, really? Every 65 cost unit is lightning. That's weird. Alright, time to continue the roast with an absolute fucking clown. Seriously, let me explain why this dude is such a fucking clown. <laughs> and, um, probably the most obvious way. Okay, so technically he does have a pretty decent main job counter that might poison people so technically there's a way to do this but his highest level skill gets a bonus mod for one of having one of these abilities inflicted before it lands the thing is there is nothing nothing in this main job that does literally fucking any of that. You have to go into the sub job, in which you get two out of four. Um, I don't, I don't think he can do confusion at all. Oh, okay, LB. So his LB. He has one means of, of increasing the damage of this move. This gets him to three. Um, can't really give people haste, but you wouldn't necessarily want to. But um, if you if you give a hasted unit slow, I believe it dispels it. So um, you you you. <laughs> so here's the thing: you're actively kind of working against yourself. Because you're you're dispelling haste before the thing that already can dispel haste but does extra damage before it does. So you're kinda of stepping on your toes with the sub job. And also, like, he has a rhythmetician. There's there's other things that you're gonna wanna do for this guy's sub job. Was that Energist? Yeah, get him some missile damage. There's there's a lot of other things you would wanna do, so that just fucking fucking waste of a skill. And also 
fucking waste of an upgrade. But also, another thing I want you to notice, all of these skills, all, everything, everything, except for the buffs and his limit break, is reflectable. So let's talk about fire for a second. Because I do pull for a fire account, even though I'm not a fire player. I do have a horse in this race. And that horse started after Sorrow. And I think that Sorrow is probably a cornerstone unit for fire. That The the horse that I have in the race is the Mont Heo combo at the moment. And we're working on maybe getting a third meta unit. Or maybe Classy Glassies 140 will give us something to work with. Right now, uh, I'm running that with either Edward or Sephiroth. Works pretty well either way, um, especially against ice. So, you know, for me, building into fire magic just, just is a no-go. I wasn't pulling for Mustang anyways. But would I rust... <laughs> fuck. Would I roast Mustang? No, he'd probably roast me, honestly, if I tried. But this guy... This guy doesn't fit into the equation. Like, sure, maybe there is some sort of a future meta, future fire unit that does a lot of these things that really takes the pressure off of his sub job and his LB and all that shit and, and makes it possible for him to do things. Really make effective moves. Someone that makes him either better or less counterable. Maybe somebody who is a more direct counter for Celeste, even for fire something that kind of balances out how counterable he is because the big difference between being wind solidly and being fire solidly is that while that kind of archetype is powerful and unique it is as strong as it is on solidly because he's a wind unit because there is not an ice unit that's really good at countering what he does necessarily like, there is some element of Alaya that, that counters Sodley pretty well, and that she's a ranged unit, and her TMR kind of helps with uh, some of the statuses that he inflicts, but even that isn't necessarily a surefire way to deal with everything that he can do and can do to your team. So he's often a curveball that can deal even with this counter element, which means that he functions on defense. He can be somewhat unbeatable. And I think that Fire has finally gotten to a point with units like Yuffie, with units like Sorrow, with units like even Roy at this point, and even um, Kingmont and Heo. It's finally gotten to a point where it has like two ways that it could go structurally, and both of them are probably defense viable as long as you don't sniff out what they're doing and play optimally into it because i mean they're counterable but they're not like easily easily counterable in the same way that just throwing any celeste at this man will make him melt and fire you're doing so good on defense don't don't add a chink to your armor you don't need this guy you don't need him genuinely fuck this guy <laughs> absolute clown the scariest thing he is going to do in battle against a water player depends on the idea that they are chronically, like, debilitatingly afraid of clowns. Because otherwise, they're going to beat your ass. And they probably still will, honestly, if they can choke through the, uh, the attack screen and just spam that skip button so they don't have to see it happen. They'll still probably wipe you out. They don't even need to know how. I don't need to know how. They had a Celeste, you had a Kefka. The rest, it seems, is obvious. So, moving on. Sweetheart Miranda. Maybe I don't like the sword sorcerer job. It, it seems a little all over the place. I'm sure that she is a great limited unit. I'm sure that she works really well on limited cost value teams. And maybe, 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 is even decent enough to make it onto some uh, fully costed teams. But, here's the thing. She... But here's the thing. She comes out real close to Winged Stern. 
And the thing is, if you're a light player that's been saving for a great light unit, that was Winged Sturden. <laughs> you have blown your load on him. And if you haven't, start blowing. Do not save for her. <laughs> don't. Don't. That's... No. No. Unless you're like out of UR scrolls or you can't buy any more of his 40 shard packs. There's no reason to save for this unit. And the other thing is, like, Light has so many 70 cost UR units. They have strong MR units as well. They have a lot of... There's also Phoebe. They have so many limited options that you do not need to spend your hard-earned fizz on this girl. And don't don't let her hollow, her holiday costume fool you has a sweetheart unit as is tradition over here on global she is in or should be in the limited pool so if this is what you're into she's not a hundred cost unit you can wait for it I don't, I don't really think people should be like spending super hard on 70 or 90 cost units really honestly the way this game is going let me roast the game in general and say it is a hundred cost meta that doesn't mean that you shouldn't build, necessarily, a unit like this, should you pull her uh, on a future banner. But I wouldn't save my biz for pitying her by any stretch of the imagination. I will absolutely say that. She's not useless, but I'm setting a pretty high bar for this video, right? And plus, like, if you want to play around with a unit that is much, much like her. You got Dia. Dia's Freya. At least Freya than Chia. Alright, Vega. How about you reveal who you really are? I mean, you're a lightning element unit. I get it. But you're secretly Sakura, aren't you? I mean, I can see the, the pink highlights on that axe. I know it's a reskinned Prunus Lamina. It already looked enough like an axe for staff as it was. And, uh, you ain't a tall boy, are you? you you're pretty short. Kinda tomboyish in a way, like... A little bit gender ambiguous. Also, kind of a child, which... Considering that Sakura is for the rest of her life stuck in the body of a never-aging, never-ending 16-year-old girl who uh, hadn't hit puberty yet. So, uh, you know, prepubescent, angsty, testosterone-laden boy. I'm sure most of us deal with enough of those as it is, even if they aren't necessarily teenagers but fit all the other requirements. So, uh, does anybody really need Vega in their life? Plus, like, let me show you one of the most interesting things that he does and why it's absolute trash. He gets 12 defense on his board, he gets 12 defense on this... Okay, he's a DPS, and look, I've already called this out for Ice Hallet, so, uh... If, if it was bad for Fuckboy Hallet, it's especially bad for this guy. I mean, come on, what the fuck. Like, he does, thankfully, get the defense penetration on another buff. Which is pretty good, but uh, uh, terrible, uh, terrible passives. His counter. That looks cool. That looks really cool. 80% chance. 30% absorb. 100% chance to hit. Good range. That all sounds great. Maybe this unit isn't terrible. How do I get that upgrade? Oh shit! I have to use his fucking sub job and you know what's really unfortunate about that he has courage and another sub job mm-hmm mm -hmm. and and this is his defense penetration buff as well you really want to run martialist on him and yet this shit happened but let me let me explain the other part about this he has a pretty good shield right but with 24 defense, even with good armor, he's probably only hitting 50 and 50 is not acceptable anymore. And this guy being kind of small, <laughs> looking kind of small, um, I think he's, he's going to have a little bit of a trouble if that barrier gets broken. 
Uh, or since it is a physical barrier, even though it is strong, if magic hits him, um, I, I think he might melt. Re I think he might melt really fast, like surprisingly fast. And the thing about that is, these are not preemptive counters. These are not happening before damage. So he's got to survive for one of these to hit. <sighs> Which I think might be pretty hard for him if you hit him with a barrier breaker. Like, this guy might not be very consistent. And, I mean, I, I really think that as cool as all that looks... He's going to need the courage. He's going to need the courage and the re-raise and the barrier. All working in tandem to really keep him alive and swinging. And unfortunately, that's going to mean that this counter just isn't worth it. Like, that, I wish this were good without the upgrade. Because it would be cool for him. But it's not. Or not particularly. You know, you really want to get it up to this, but you lose so much that this boy needs in that, that, like, it feels like there's too many disconnected builds within this character. It feels like that is too much of a sub-specialty. Finally, we have Reagan, who's a handsome man to end the video on. So, uh... I'm going to leave him there for a minute while I thank you for liking and subscribing and watching up to this point. I really appreciate you and if you appreciate all the effort that I put into making this channel work, there's a couple ways to pay me back for that effort. First, coffee, um, Patreon. I write books, you can buy those, it's probably even cheaper than donating money and you get something out of it, like a book. Um, you could also join my Discord. There's going to be links for all of those things in the description, though, so check all of that out. And I'll see you in the next one.